Hey, it's Todd. I just want to let you know this TOA Storytellers podcast episode is sponsored by my company, Todd Olivas and Associates. We've been supplying court reporters for depositions since 2003. If you're an attorney and need a reporter anywhere in California, we've got you covered. We're on a lot of preferred vendor panels already, but if we're not of the ones you have, usually a simple inquiry from you to your TPA or employer does the trick. Or if you work at a TPA or employer, please ask your defense attorneys to give us a try on one of your files. We've been known to treat our clients like family, and we would love a chance to work with you next. To schedule a deposition, simply call 888-566-0253 or visit www.toddolivas.com. That's www.toddolivas.com. Thank you, and hopefully we'll see you at your next deposition. I remember on the third and last day in between the morning and afternoon sessions of the test, getting in my car and thinking, I wonder how long it would take me to drive to Mexico. And if I just did and I never came back, like, would that be okay? And then I kind of got myself together again, (laughs) walked back in and finished the test. You have a little bit of a caveman brain, everyone does, and then there's like a higher thinking brain. And sometimes when you're feeling distress or just discomfort, that caveman brain that's just based on survival and doing what feels good, that kind of wants to take over. But you have to say like, no, no, no. I mean, everyone has little moments where they think like, this is too hard, I can't do that. But that's not really what's important because everyone feels that way from time to time. What's important is that you just get back up and you complete the job. Don't listen to anyone if they tell you you can't do something. Almost nothing is impossible if you work hard enough at it. My name is Kayla Schmidt, and I am with the Oaks Law Group. Good morning. Hello. Hello and good morning. It is still morning. Yes, we are lucky. It is still morning. Yeah, mm-hmm. We're lucky enough to have Kayla Schmidt from the Oaks Law Group with us today on the TOA Storytellers podcast. My name is Todd Olivas, and I'm joined with... John Paul Castro. Hello, Kayla. Hello. Am I saying it right? You are, yes. Kayla. I want to like put a Y in there. I don't know why. It, there, <clears throat> why should, there should be a Y in there. My parents it's fine. decided that my life should be more difficult <laughs> you can't. from day one. So They wanted to give you like a little homework assignment for the rest of your life to correct everybody on how to really spell Yeah, a lot of times people call me Carla. They think they see an R in there, and yeah. So sometimes I just don't correct them. Oh, you have no idea how many times I've been called Olivia's. Todd Olivia's. Where's the I come from? The little I, you know. Oh my God, Olive. I sometimes I think we should change our name because Oliveras. Olivas. That too. Yeah. People are like, uh, well, how do you? Your company's called Todd Olivas. All of us? No, not all of us. (laughs) Olivas. Sure, go with that. Go with that. It should be all of us. Oh, Todd. What? Todd, all, brand, all of us. You're good with branding, I think. You should uh, do like Christmas cards that say <laughs> Merry Christmas from, and then Oliva, oh, but space out, you know, with a dash in between yeah, the yeah, syllables. Yeah, yeah. All of us. All of us. You have a knack for like that stuff. Do you think, Thank you. You think that's true? I do. I enjoy it. How did you it's, come up with the name Oaks Law Group? So the and, o- versus naming it after your own name or something, you know? Yeah. Well, number one, I figured if I change my name later on, then we have to change the firm name. But more importantly, I think that it's important for everyone at the firm to feel like they're a part of it and that no one is more important than anyone else at the firm. So Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be a name that encompassed everyone. And I think the tree is a good reference because it's a bit cheesy, but I think it's true from the roots, which you don't see. That's the strongest part of the tree and you need those for the tree to survive. I think it's very important for the staff that's more invisible here at the firm, people who you don't see in court or people that you don't speak to on the phone, uh, for them to know that they're part of the group and they're very, very important. So that was the main reason I chose the Oaks. Partnered with that is my dad being a forester. He was Uh, very, yeah, he was very influential in me, both my parents, but my dad especially pushing me to get an education as a foundation for my adult life. Mm And so it's kind of an homage to him and then that whole reference about everyone being important. And that's why we did the Oaks Law Group and not the Oaks Law Firm, because it is a group. Everyone together in the team makes it work. Everything's very thought out. Thank you. There was was no 
no like haphazard you know decision that you made one night and b- bought a domain name that happened to be available or in, picked a logo out of a list of cheap logos well it's funny you know that I mean? you say that because nowadays you have to make sure the domain is available right. before you can commit to so a name true. so it's when a land, i land grab yeah when i got the domain i was like yes got it this is happening what is the domain so i don't get it give it out wrong www.theokeslawgroup.com that's it it's so strong it's a strong name that's what I was gonna say. It's 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 zero cheesy. You said, oh, it might be cheesy. No, it's it it says to me strength, and even your logo and all the branding is just like so perfect. The Oaks Law Group rooted in excellence. That's yeah, the tag phrase. It mm-hmm. is. Thank you. It's all very very well nicely tied in. Thank you. So you are a workers' comp defense firm, a group. Yes. <laughs> well, we are a firm, but yes, we are yes, we are yes. a group together. Yes. Yes. And how long have you been in business? Just over three years. Wow. Yeah, it's been a, a great journey so far, and we're excited for the future as well. Yeah, I see all these attorneys on here already. You're growing. Yes. Like right before my very eyes, yes, right? Yes. Like Every time I re- refresh the page, there's another one added on. <laughs> yeah, and we're really proud of everyone that we have. Mm-hmm. We take a lot of time. We're very careful with the decisions that we make to add staff to the team. Mm-hmm. So I can confidently say that all of our attorneys are great. One thing that I tell all of our attorneys is I'm the floor, not the ceiling. You shouldn't look at me and what I do and what the files that I handle and the way I go about things as this is the 100%, this is the best it can ever get. Look at me at the floor. I expect you to do the same level of work I do or even better. Mm -hmm. If you can take your practice beyond what mine is and I can learn something from you. We all win. Exactly. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a great approach. Never heard that the floor rather yeah, than the ceiling. Yeah, never heard of that. You're full of these things. Hold on, I gotta get my pen. And write these things. <laughs> I've got all day. <laughs> but I noticed it was very interesting on your on your page when you started this. You said that you started it and that uh, let's say before starting the Oaks Law Group with Deliza Wirt. Hi, Deliza, over yes. there. What are you doing, by the way? Doing some work? Yeah. Just listening in. You're next, by the way. I know. Deliza's gonna be our next podcast but what is that relationship i i mean i i know but what for people out there who who is deliza wirt to you deliza wirt is my partner my partner in crime she's not a partner at the attorney at the firm technically because she's not an attorney but that's just a technicality she Mm -hmm. really is my partner in everything that we do here uh we run pretty much everything by each other to make sure that we're on Mm -hmm. the same page Mm -hmm. i couldn't have done it without her whoa we met when working together at a prior law firm Uh and she was my assistant but we developed a close friendship through working together and I think what's unique about our relationship is that we're able to do our work stuff, keep it professional, mm-hmm. but also be friends, hang out on the weekends. Mm-hmm. Um, we enjoy spending time with our families together. We have children. So your, near lives, an age. your lives outside of work also blend together? Yes. For real? Yeah. And it's cool because we can do, we can have like a disagreement <laughs> we're at work. We're talking about you. Right? She's like, <laughs> I don't know. Should um should we have the Lisa step outside so that we can yeah, talk about her? Absolutely. <laughs> Not just kidding. <laughs> no, you can stay. You can stay. No, but yeah, that's, that is I a, think very that's a very unique yeah. situation, right? Mm-hmm. I've never heard that of something like that before. That's so cool. Yeah. What What do you think that she brings to the partnership side during you know during the daylight hours here at work that you know that you gravitate towards? She is such a people person. She has a way with people. Um, She's always friendly, positive, and not that I am not those things, but she also has a different perspective on things. So she might tell me something about a letter I wrote or a phone call I made, and I think, oh my God, Mm -hmm. I never never thought about it like that. So it's just, I think it's always good to have another set of eyes, Mm -hmm. uh, someone to bounce things off of, especially when you're doing something that's this important to you like the firm is to me and she takes full ownership in everything she does i know the firm is really important to her as well so it's nice to have someone that you can rely upon through thick and thin it's kind of like a marriage it is oh, like i was gonna yeah. say it's like your day you day, guys probably day spend time. more time together than during the week than with their spouses yeah is that true yeah that's probably true huh i mean i spend more time with you todd <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're like, hey, call me, call me. Yeah, we spend more time on the phone with each other, I think, than our spouses. Have you ever fought? Yeah. Was it a good fight? 
Oh man. Yeah, a, re- a, re- a recent one. Team it'll it'll come to you. It'll come to you. Yeah. It'll... <laughs> I I would say on the business end, we don't fight we Mm -hmm. maybe have disagreements and we discuss what's best for the firm and if we think it should go in a different direction or things like that we always talk it out i think the only quote-unquote fights we've ever had which haven't been many have been in our personal friendship but it it doesn't happen often Mm -hmm. they're not huge and we we've never let you guys been able to fix it too yeah well we've never let a disagreement in our personal lives carry over to the business and vice versa i think we're very good with compartmentalizing Mm -hmm. so we might have a disagreement on something the way the business is going but then we'll talk to each other about personal stuff the next day and it's like not even a problem that sounds like a very healthy relationship that could go the distance then you know right yeah Yeah. because when when people say oh we don't argue or it's just just fake oh yeah naive wait yeah. wait just wait right just wait yeah and but it, the the good part is being able to fix the problem or not the problem but you know be able to agree to dis- disagree if a lot of times you know because people not necessarily have to agree with you and everything right yeah there's a mutual level of respect i think we both respect each other and we feel like mm-hmm. that i don't necessarily agree with what you're saying but mm-hmm. i think it i know i know it's coming from a good place yes and so i consider that it. is the key as long as you have faith um, but that both sides have faith that the, the person has <clears throat> the overall best interest at heart and it's really because they care so much that they're coming at it but they're coming at it because they're a different human being differently than you would and just go into it with that understanding then you realize we're really on the same team and we just see things differently because we're different people but ultimately you know teamwork yeah we're, we're both working towards the same goal so take me back though I noticed that you got your law degree in St. Paul Minnesota I did. How did you come all the way out here? Well, that's originally where I'm from. I spent... That's where your parents are at. Well, they are the first couple in the history, I think, of the world to have moved to Kansas City for the weather. After they (laughs) retired, they left Minnesota. They like the snow, the cold, the seasons. Well, they said Kansas City is warm because they're used to... Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they're long gone as well. My brother lives in Denver now. So we've all left. But it was a good place to grow up. I think there's something about mm-hmm. being in the cold and kind of being in survival mode six mm-hmm. months of the year that True. makes you hardier as a person. Yeah. Um, Minnesota's cold is like cold. It's, there's, there's not even, there should be a, another word for Minnesota cold. Oh, it's, I mean, you're basically in Canada. They say you can freeze an egg faster than you can fry it. in the winter yeah whoa i only know two things about minnesota one is that it's very cold okay and that jesse ventura was your governor at one point he was oh and prince Uh, isn't prince from there yes that's That's like that's three things yeah that's true Mm -hmm. prince was from there did you ever see prince growing up (laughs) no i did go so he owned a venue called first avenue Mm -hmm. a music club it's pretty famous there's a lot of stars that perform there and i've been there a few times for shows yeah. But I never got the honor to meet the man in purple. So you, you grew up there. You're, you're born there. <laughs> yes. Right? And then you went Sorry. To, no. I was born in Nebraska. But oh, okay. Neighboring. A Husker. Yeah, corn huskers. But when I was very, very young, we moved to Minnesota. So that's what I consider where, I, where I'm from. Yeah, yeah. And you were raised there and went to high school there and went to college there. Yes. And got your, got your JD? Or, um yep. Okay. And law school. Wow. So, but eventually though, with, with all that under your belt, you decided to make your way westward. Why? So the day after I graduated from law school, I packed up my 10 year old Honda Civic with a little U-Haul trailer on the back, Wow. put whatever I had in it and made the trek out to California. Why California? I hated the cold and who doesn't want to come to sunny California. So I figure I will study for the bar take it and if i don't pass the california bar i can always go back but i passed oh i stayed and the rest is history so where how do you know where in california you wanted to go to and true california's pretty big planning that out anywhere must have been different it's how we do anything nowadays the internet ah so i found a room to rent on craigslist in fountain valley (laughs) And I lived there for a while for dirt cheap while I was studying for the Fountain bar. Fountain Valley sounds beautiful on, on paper, right? Fountains and valleys, right? But when you get there, I mean, it's it's all connected. It, there's 
one city bleeds into the next almost, yeah. right? Around here. Or Santa Fe Springs. Oh, it sounds Hawaiian like Gardens. Tropical. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hawaiian <laughs> Gardens. <laughs> Three days and nights in the ho- beautiful Hawaiian Gardens. Airfare included. Yeah, yeah. Bullet, bulletproof vest included. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Our, but, our listeners might be from Hawaiian Gardens. <laughs> I, I love it. I love, I it love Hawaiian Gardens. No. The <laughs> casino there is really nice. Yes. And I would choose any of those cities in a heartbeat over cold Minnesota. Oh. So yes. it, it's all great. And so I, mm-hmm. I stayed there for a while, studied for the bar, passed, and the rest is history. That still amazes me. Well, thanks so that, much for being on our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's it. Wraps it up. No, but <laughs> that, that just says a lot about her m- mindset, you know, but why she opened even a law firm. You know, well, you, even before you, that, like... The courage to get in the your ten-year-old Honda and make that's an entrepreneur from wherever. day one. Yeah, is, I is never, that, was that scary? I didn't think of it as scary. Okay. It was an adventure, and I mean, I've always had great parents. They've mm-hmm. always been, let me say, cautiously optimistic about the things I do. So I, I've always known I could fall back on them if I've needed to, mm-hmm. and that's. I mean, what a better mm-hmm. feeling to have people that love you unconditionally and that you know are gonna be here for you whenever right, you need them right so i came out here just mm-hmm. kind of rose colored glasses on and thinking everything would work out and it has when you started you started at which law firm at black and rose originally and did you before that did you always have a uh, an idea that you wanted to own a law firm no i had no idea and i just wasn't thinking that far down the line mm-hmm. like so you never really thought of yourself as an entrepreneur well, not beforehand, no. It never was okay. real conscious thought I had. But when I passed the bar, like most people, I think, in that position, I had huge student loans. Yeah. Mm. And I told myself, I will take the first job that's offered to me. Anything. Anything. Any kind of law. Exactly. Just happened to be workers' comp defense. It happened to be work comp defense. And I fell in love with it. Really? It just was a great fit for me. Mm. I feel like there's always room to be challenged in comp. It's one of those areas of law that when you look at it from the outside, it seems fairly simple. And then the more you peel the layers back, the more there is to know. And you think, I I don't know nearly enough. Right. You know, and I do like how medicine's always evolving, what we learn about the human body and how to fix it is evolving. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that kind of makes its way through the legislature and changes the laws of comp. So I feel like workers' compensation is a constantly evolving body of law. Wow. So it keeps things exciting. So there is a misconception out there, I think, that, oh, it's workers' comp or it's, quote, just workers' comp, right? Exactly. And, but re- meanwhile, the nuance though is, is a growing field and it's highly, it sounds like you're highly interested by it. And, and each file I'm sure is way different, even though it could be the same type of injury. <clears throat> exactly. A lot of people injure themselves the same way, but nobody has the same body. So everyone heals differently. Mm. On top of that, mm. you go to 10 different doctors and you'll get 10 different diagnoses, That's which true. I think people outside of comp don't realize. I certainly didn't before I started. I thought, you, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's science it's black and white you go to the doctor they tell you what's wrong and that's the end of it but it's really very subjective when it comes down to the medicine so with those different factors you know what panel qme doctor you get or Mm. whether you have a prior injury to the same body part that's going to affect the outcome so each case i think is new and exciting hey when you when you first get out of law school and you first pass your you, you get your bar card right and you're out in working life of an attorney how do you know the, I mean, because they can only teach you certain things in law school, right? Probably uh, a nodding acquaintance to a lot of areas, but nothing specific. I would, I would think. So, how do you actually learn all the the depth and breadth of a particular field? Just trial by fire. Yeah, being prepared. Jump in. Yeah, just being prepared case by case, taking it day by day, mm-hmm. and then taking the things that you've learned on your past cases as building blocks and remembering those as you move forward on other cases. Yeah, I don't think I would be where I am today if I hadn't started out there. Uh, Why? Well, a lot of the things that I learned there Mm -hmm. were extremely valuable to me, valuable enough for me to be able to leave, start my own firm and be successful at that. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a wonderful experience and I look back on it fondly. I just chose uh, to start a new chapter of my life and a Mm -hmm. new firm 
to kind of do things a little bit differently, but I took the things that I found valuable there and I integrated them into mm-hmm. my practice here. Mm-hmm. I think it's just a, evolved into a different practice. But when you do decide to start your own thing and you, and you leave somewhere where you've been, is it that, that, that can't be a easy conversation to have with the partners or whoever hired you originally, right? That's it's never an easy yeah shift over, right? Well, it was a conversation that didn't occur because oh. I, I I know I'm not sure how much you guys know about what is in like prohibited communication with prospective clients, current clients when you leave a firm, but it's it's a shark tank when you leave. It's a like it's a bloodbath. So I couldn't give them advance notice that I was leaving for them to gather all my files and all my oh, clients gotcha, and shut gotcha. me out and say, mm-hmm. you know, you're not, you can't communicate with any of them. You mm-hmm. w- here, we're shutting down your computer. I had to be very cautious. I, I did not contact any of my clients in advance uh-huh. because that's uh, not allowed, but I waited till I gave them my notice, which was effective immediately. And mm-hmm. then a few minutes later started calling the clients that I had at that firm and letting them know that I had left, that I would love the opportunity to keep working with them, Mm -hmm. that the legal process wouldn't change, the cost wouldn't change, they would just be working with the same attorney at a different firm and those who chose to to come with me it makes sense. Like, so basically, the files are the files. The clients are the, the clients. They can stay. They can go. But for your own ethics, you have to give notice where you're at, then leave and set up shop if you cho- so choose, and then you can notify the world that hey, I'm over here now. Yeah. So you can do it jointly with your prior firm, but I didn't feel like that would happen. It both both parties have to you know they can send out a joint letter to clients saying mm. so and so is leaving who currently handles your files yeah. you have three options the first is to stay with us and we'll assign a new attorney mm-hmm. the second is to go with them and leave our firm the third is you can find a new attorney altogether so according to the bar ethics that's what you need to do if you're going to solicit clients before you leave gotcha so kind of dicey, sticky game. You got to make sure that you walk the line, right? Yeah. You attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> but it all ended up okay because you've been doing the three years and all's well. Yes. yes. Such a beautiful location too. Where did, how did you, you started in Long Beach, right? The first, the first office is in Long Beach. Yes. Our original office mm-hmm. is still in Long Beach. That's where I had lived for a number of years. Mm-hmm. And I love Long Beach. I think it's a great city. Me too. It's got a lot of vibrancy. It does. Yeah, it's got a great culture, great personality. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's like a little mini LA on the water. It is. On the water. That's you. Yeah. I can see the brochure right now. <laughs> a mini LA on the water. Yeah, but cheaper parking. Uh, <laughs> but, it, but it is. And I I'll, more than that, I think it's a great central point. It's still mm-hmm. in LA County, mm-hmm. but it's very close to Orange County. So you can really get to yeah. anywhere as far as the boards that you're going to attend. Right. I think almost every board you can get to within an hour. Now, traffic sometimes mm-hmm. messes that up a bit, but it's very centrally located. But today we're in your Anaheim office. Do you consider this um, a satellite office or what do you consider this? No, I consider them to be sort of equals because Mm -hmm. we have a lot of people that work out of this office too. As we started to grow, we had people that were in LA County and Orange County. We offer all of our attorneys the option of working remotely. That's great. But I also like to give them a structured office space if they would like to use it because Mm -hmm. I know sometimes for myself, I would prefer to be in an office setting just Mm -hmm. to be in that work mode Mm -hmm. and be more efficient. But it's nice to also be able to work from home, really work from anywhere you have internet access. Is that because you feed off of sort of the office community culture that helps you kind of stay in in the mode? Yeah, it's nice to be able to- Leave come. home and come to the office. Yeah, right? exactly. I'm like that too. Cause I have a home office as well, as well, but we have a Bray office in Marriott as well. And if I were just to stay at home, it would drive me crazy, you know? I mean, some people can do it, but the distractions, it's not really even the distractions, it's the lack of sort of professional stimulation, maybe. 
Huh. Yeah, and it's nice to do the routine, to get mm-hmm. up, to get dressed, to get yourself right. in that yeah. mode. And then I think it's also nice, you appreciate being at home more when you miss it a little bit. Right. So it's nice at the end of the day to be excited, looking forward to go ho- going mm-hmm. home, mm-hmm. seeing your kids, all that. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. So t- we're recording this on a Friday. Um, would you normally be in the office right now on a Friday? I would say yes, because mm-hmm. there's no court on Fridays. So sometimes I have depositions, but right. Fridays are a great day to be in the office. Everyone's in a good mood. Mm-hmm. People are still productive, but they're more happy about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, Do you enjoy taking depots? I do. I really love depositions. The thing that I don't like about depositions is just the deposition summary afterwards, because you have to relive it all over again. And that sometimes is a little bit tedious of a process it's invaluable of course it needs to be done but if i could have a court reporter that could also do my depot summary after i know (laughs) i think in the olden days they used to do that as a service like the court reporter would go back home produce the transcript like normal but then also the summary would be produced and i don't know how they would know though what were the salient points like how does that work right yeah that's interesting i don't know maybe that was really old school yeah, mm-hmm. but without that would be cool. Somebody could read your mind is what was what was important. Yes, said that day. Yeah, but so, they can't do that. No, but I enjoy it. I like meeting new people. I think seeing someone face to face and mm-hmm. judging what kind of character they are is very important on a case. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Although I have been fooled. Really? What's what? Yeah, happened? I want to hear one. Well, sometimes you sit down, you ask a person all these questions under oath, and you think, I know they are lying. You just get that feeling, right? And then you subpoena their records, they come in, and they were telling the truth the whole time. But then the opposite happens, too, where you think this person is going to make a great witness at trial. They're very straightforward. You subpoena the records, and you get Mm -hmm. them in, and everything they told you was a lie. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of creepy, huh? It is. It's very weird to think that your radar can sometimes be off like that. But serial killers live amongst us. That's true. They slip through the cracks and then they. Oh my gosh. We, we see so them on true. the news and then we see them on Netflix later. <laughs> With the special. And like, yeah. how did they kill 140 people? <laughs> and nobody knew. I didn't know, right? To the whole 70s. So you have to kind of like for what you do, not only need, you need the law side of those skills, but also you need human. Uh, well, judge of character and sort of that side, too, to really judge what's in front of you, right? Yeah, I think the best attorneys are street smart and book smart. That's what I was trying to say, street smart. Yeah, it takes a little bit of both. I think you have both. Thank you. You seem like... Very confident. Very sharp. Thank you. Sharp and confident. Yeah. Do you feel that way? I do. I mean, I'm human, so there's times I feel like I made a huge mistake or... You know, how could I, how could I be have so you blind? Felt that, have you felt that about this podcast so far? No, it's, I was a bit nervous before we started, <laughs> uh, but I feel good now. It's like your other guests have said, it's like having a conversation with it's friends. Fun. Yeah, it's pretty comfortable. And you're so easy to talk to, so it's like flows out, you know? Right. Well, I trust you in the editing process <clears throat> to make me look real good. But we're going to change your voice a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> can you give me an accent? Well, what kind of accent would you want? Yeah, we can do that. The Minnesota accent. What do you need? Oh, you don't, sure. ha- you don't have that accent. No. Minnesota. Minnesota, don't you know? <laughs> oh, I love that. I love Fargo. Far- well, oh. that's, that's not Minnesota, but that movie had all kinds of accents that sound like that. Yeah, it's great. A lot of it was filmed in Minnesota. It was. Have you seen the Fargo series no. on, on FX? I think I tried to watch it, but I was like so, you know, impacted by the movie that I couldn't get into it. TV version was it any good yeah it's I mean it's a bit different than the movie but it's great I really liked it yeah so you kind of have that accent then if you want it right yeah of course if I need to when you go like, when I you go over to. there do you does, does your accent change I don't think so no but I don't think anyone thinks they have an accent when they're talking you know it's the rest of the world that has the accent right so, so true I don't think I would notice it if I slipped back into it when I was there are there even oak trees in Minnesota yeah there are yes okay I didn't know. What kind of trees did your dad work with? Well, he worked with all trees. So he worked for the U.S. Forest Service uh, for the federal government. And he started off as someone who just went out in the fields and planted trees, a lot of surveying work. And he slowly worked his way up. He went back to school when I was a kid and got his Ph.D. What? Yeah. 
I know. I don't know how we did it. With Salt of the earth and also like a genius. <laughs> yeah. Well, just hard work, you know? Yeah, that's what I mean. My dad always said, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room, but you have to be the hardest working person in the room. He said, I might not always be the smartest guy, but no one is going to outwork me. Whoa. So I think he instilled that work ethic in me. Is he, is, he some, is he a type of mentor for you? Yeah, in a lot of ways he is. Um, he, he wasn't an entrepreneur, but the, the thing with him was that he worked for the Forest Service from before I was born until he just retired two years ago. So he really persevered, stuck with it, rose through the ranks, and I, I admire that. I think there's mm -hmm. a lot to be said for someone who just modestly puts their head down, goes mm -hmm. to work every day, and oh, yeah. makes a life for themselves. And for their family. Yeah. That's true. How, do you have any brothers and sisters? I do. I have a younger brother. He lives in Denver, like I mentioned. What's he doing? He works in what logistics. Works. He does? Yeah, which is very interesting to me. You deal with truck drivers. Yeah, you right. know, So he sits at a computer and he figures out what routes they should take mm -hmm. so that they avoid stalling and rush hour traffic through major cities. If there's detours the truck drivers don't know about, he changes their routes. And then That's I think true. the most... Well, I learned... It's like efficiency that. science, trying to be as efficient as humanly possible. Yes. Yeah. And I think the most interesting thing about his job mm -hmm. is dealing with the truck drivers because mm -hmm. you have some young kid sitting behind a computer telling you how to do your job when you've <laughs> done this route for the last 10 years, how yep. many hundreds of times, and they don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't know it better than you. So it's kind of interesting to to hear his stories That's about so true. how they push back. Can and you imagine you're, you're, you're taking the same route to Anaheim from your house, yeah, and then you have, for example, Waze. Yeah, you know it's happened to me so many times. My wife puts on Waze, and then I'm like, "No, babe, why am I gonna jump on the 605? This does not make sense." Yeah, yeah, but it knows. And it, sure enough, it's because this people like 105, Kayla's whatever it was, people, there was an accident like yeah. or something like that. But you just feel like that would have been a longer route. But there's a reason why that you, you had to take the other freeway or the other, you know, the other drive. Exactly. So, so you think about the Amazon, the prime two day shipping. Well, now they even have yeah. one day and same day shipping. Isn't that insane? We can order it now and in two hours it's at your door. How is that even possible? Right? It's, it's crazy. But if yeah. you've, have you seen the port of Long Beach with all the containers that oh, come in? Uh -huh. Yeah. Just an insane amount of stuff coming in every single day. It's, it's very true. Got to be a part of it. Hey, but you mentioned something a minute ago with your brother, like sort of, we didn't put it like this, but ageism, you know, where people <clears throat> who have been somewhere longer than you and you're younger than they are. Have you ever felt that? Because I, I would never ask your age, but I, I, I picture, I peg you guys as really, really young, you know, and do you ever feel like in, in this, this industry. industry that it could be like an old boys club in some ways? I do. I've been mistaken for the court reporter when I show up at a depot uh, a yeah. number of times. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> not, not by anyone. Yeah. No, your... I know. No, I know. But Were you like... wearing your TOA? To talk, I should, to shirt. I should have at least, or the glasses uh, that I left on your desk. I should have. I'm gonna walk in with those glasses next uh -huh. time. But you know, you walk into a doctor depot or even yeah. a regular depot, and saying. opposing counsel yeah. says, "Okay, the court reporter's here. Where's defense counsel?" And I'm like, "Hello, that's me." But mm -hmm. you know, I think it can be used to your advantage as well. Mm -hmm. When people underestimate you, that can yeah. be a downfall for them. Yeah, the guard Maybe, is down. Yeah, they maybe don't prepare for trial as well or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. you know, but you're here, you're prepared, you're ready to go. And I think with people that have made that mistake, it only happens once. And then they see me next time and there's a level of respect that maybe wasn't there before. And we always have managed to build a good relationship. Has that kind of, has a, has that kind of thing actually happened to you? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I think, like I said, I think people then mm -hmm. see what you're made of Mm -hmm. what you bring to the table and then there's that level of respect there and out of it comes a relationship a working relationship that's beneficial to both parties comp is such a small world right it's very important for you to get along or at least play nice mm -hmm. with as many people as you can because that's how you get things done there's a lot of negotiation in comp yeah mm -hmm. a, a lot of goodwill in comp you know often people will threaten sanctions or this and uh, that but they hardly ever follow through with them so it's I, true it is your advantage if somebody else takes you uh, or underestimates you because they don't know that you came from minnesota in a 10 year old honda accord with a half tank of gas you know what i mean civic. and that you sorry sorry, sorry. <laughs> it was the honda it was the honda civic sorry with and then showed up here with a lot of grit 
to create your own firm. And so the, it'd be easy to underestimate that and just assume, you know, one thing about you. But then to actually see you perform, well, can turn some heads, right? I, I would like to think so, yeah. Turns out. Deliza. Deliza, is that true? You've turned a mini head. <laughs> You've turned a mini head. A head. <laughs> well, so it's three years in now, and so what's what's the future kind of hold? Just continue on and growing it, and don't screw it up. Well, I mean, I think we're in a good spot where we've yeah. realized what works, what mm-hmm. doesn't work, and yes, we want to grow. We we love being able to provide our services to as many people as possible. Number one, I just enjoy doing my job, so I would mm-hmm. like to continue doing it. Uh, but I think growth is good. It keeps you on your toes if you kind of just stay stagnant and you're not looking to reach that next step. You mm-hmm. become comfortable, and I think that's when you maybe don't work as hard. You don't put in all the effort you should. And then mm-hmm. I think that's when things get boring, too. Right. Yeah. You mentioned that you've discovered by now some things that work, some things that don't work. What can you say about stuff that you've kind of figured out that doesn't work? Can you think of anything? So when we first started off, I think we were a little bit looser with letting people work from home right from the get-go and what Uh, we've found is that it takes people a little bit of a time to get into a groove with working from home because mm -hmm. with most attorneys and some of our support staff that works remotely as well they're so used to being in a structured office setting with a lot of other firms Mm -hmm. that once they start working from home they need to learn how to be accountable to have the same productivity as they had at those other places. And we've found that they've all been able to get there, but it takes a little bit of discipline, a little bit of time to transition into mm-hmm. that different work mode. Yeah. We we don't like to micromanage people. We like to let them do their thing, come to us when they need something, and then mm-hmm. we come to them when we need something. But other than that, we don't need to be in their business all the time so some yeah. people that aren't used to working in a culture like that mm-hmm. that are used to being held accountable constantly for everything i think at first the freedom is a little bit oh, too yeah. much kid in the candy store they don't know how to behave <laughs> yeah maybe. so have from that have you learned that well that when you hire somebody new that there's like maybe a promotion probationary period where they need to come in and get inculcated with your processes and then once the trust is built up and you feel, then they can add the remote working? Yeah, exactly. So we sprinkle it in, we kind of mm-hmm. slowly move the ratio from one to the other yeah. with the work to home. Does and that go for all the employees or just the attorneys you're talking about? We have some support staff that work remotely too. One oh, really? of our, yeah. one of our, Uh, All of our assistants are great. One of our assistants that have been with us for a while, she's awesome. She works from home three days a week, and she comes in too. Mm -hmm. And it works for her, and she's held accountable. She stays on top of her stuff without needing to be reminded. So I figure if you can get your work done from home, and I can make your life a little bit better by allowing Mm -hmm. you to do that, Mm -hmm. then why wouldn't I? 100%. Yeah, because some people have to, with the kids, you know, like I think a lot of, uh, from previous podcasts, we found out that, um, the old law firms didn't think like that. You know, they didn't think about when people had kids when they were pregnant or, you know, certain things like that. Were those things that you thought about when you were planning to own your own business? How you yeah. Were, you know, the culture. Your- yeah. What kind of culture you would create? Yeah, it was. And one of the things that we really wanted to do was to be paperless, which mm-hmm. allows you to work from anywhere, mm-hmm. but also it makes you very environmentally responsible, which having my dad as a forester has always been something that I've thought about. So it was kind of just a bonus that being paperless and supporting the environment allows you to have a more flexible life. I think Mm -hmm. if people are happy, they're doing what they love and they're able to live a good life at the same time, then everyone wins. I think employees are more productive and better employees when they're happy. Richard Branson has that saying, it's something like, train your employees well enough that they can work anywhere treat them well enough that they'll never leave you he did say that and i've I've said that before well i've 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 quoted that before you know so that's so true so true so that sounds like something you have like kind of made part of your your culture and your dna here and believe it or not the the clients notice that too you know the clients can notice if if it's a revolving door of people. You know, when I take out clients, I notice that they say, oh, you know what, this so-and-so law firm, mm-hmm. I can see that 
there's something going on in there, or、mm-hmm. you know, they can see if, if they're happy just by talking to a secretary. They can kind of see the culture that's going on in the law firm, and they can pick and choose their clients like that too, or their I mean their the law firms that she they use for their files. So、yeah. I guess that that's something that they see too. Okay, good. I'm、yeah. glad it doesn't go unnoticed. It's a good ROI too for a business owner, you know. Yeah. To invest in that because then the retention saves money ultimately, right? Yeah, training people is hard. Right. It's expensive. So you want to train them well, you want to train them right, and you want to not have to do it again、right. every few months. Right. Have you had any family members ask for a job? Not directly, but having them live out of state helps. Yeah. <laughs> We were talking to my uncle Carlos the other day, and、yeah. he had so far fifteen family members that worked for him at one time or another. At one time, yeah. Wow, what does he do? He's、uh, the copy service to、uh, CVC Legal. Oh yeah. So yeah, it's a very family. I worked there. My brother worked there.、That's、my、right. dad. My mom. <laughs> pretty much everybody. So I'm sure, like, it, it's know, like、that's... the farm team for all these other. <laughs> Did you find that when you worked for him, you were held more accountable because he was、oh. family and you would see him again, or did you feel like you could get away with more? No, I felt like he had more things for me to do. He probably treated you guys harder than he would way harder.、Um, I think we had more goals put on us, and I honestly felt like there was more. My my、uh, coworkers were looking at me more, or my brother more, on what we did. As to to be an example for the for the rest of them, you know,、mm-hmm. we kind of you know kind of not did as much stuff. They, I'm sure that they would have been also more at ease, not doing the, the jobs that they're, they're supposed to do. Yeah. So I mean, in that sense, yeah, my uncle Carlos did. A, he was really good at training us, but he also made sure that we were doing our jobs.、And、I think that's that's important too. Part of your job, Kayla, is to、um, well grow the firm, grow the grow the client base too. So. Um, you did one of our TOA University, our first one. Remember yes, that, remember that? Yes. Thank you for doing that, by the way. Of course. Do you get out there to the trade shows much and get booths and things like that going, or how are you growing that side of it? Well, I have ten week old twins, so、oh, for the past、right. almost year, I haven't been doing a lot of marketing because、mm-hmm. being pregnant and all that, and just focusing on、uh, all my energies on my work.、Mm-hmm. But. Getting back out there and doing more marketing、mm-hmm. this year coming up is one of my top priorities. You know, funny enough, I have a business mentor who's helped me、oh. with a lot of things, just throwing ideas and him giving advice. And one of the things he said to me before I started my firm、mm-hmm. was that as a law firm owner, you actually have two kinds of clients.、Mm. One of them is your client in the traditional sense. The other is your attorneys. Because if you don't、mm-hmm. make them happy, you're not going to keep them,、mm-hmm. and they're what keep your clients happy. So、mm-hmm. part of my job、yeah. is keeping the attorneys happy so that they can keep our other clients happy. One hundred percent, that's true. And that's how I feel about all of our attorneys, all of our support staff. We're just we enjoy each other's company.、Mm-hmm. Like we get together once a month and we do a lunch here at the Anaheim office, and we just have so much fun doing it. That's good. We just, everyone's laughing the whole time. The lunch t- tends to linger on because people kind of don't want it to end. And this last week or two, we had a lunch. We pulled our names for the Secret Santa for the holiday party,、Whoa. and yeah, everyone's pumped. That is cool. Is that true? <laughs> hey, do you, that's、uh, very、uh, important though. I'm gonna have to bring up something uncomfortable. Uh oh. No, but I mean, do you remember at RTU at University One where you where you were there and and you had to yell at us? Oh yeah. Well, I don't know if yell is the right word. <laughs> oh. We just we Todd raised. Todd did cover his ears. <laughs> it, we were. It was deserved. So,、yeah. so, those are those are things that we learn from. We learn from that. I always remember that. The, um, because y- you helped us get better, because you were a sponsor for us, you know, and we this is our first time doing that event or anything like it. So, we had sold various、uh, sponsorship things, and you were great, and you you bought the Wi-Fi sponsorship, right? So basically, that means that you paid I don't know whatever the dollars were, but then you got to、uh, have your name with the Wi-Fi code. Well, she should have had her name, but we forgot that part. Yeah. So basically, you paid money for nothing for for 
for free Wi-Fi, like in, <laughs> invisible airwaves. <laughs> well, she got yeah. she got to uh, meet Caroline Song. We she paid for that pretty much. Yeah, isn't it uh, funny see, I how these it, things always work out? No, but it is funny. One one of the things we did after that, especially after that um, convention, we 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 realized that we need to do a better job in making the sponsors feel even more appreciated. Of yes, what, what they are putting money in. As money much as into. the attendees is on our mind to make sure the value is there, the sponsors need to also get their return on investment. And you reminded us of that. that you day, come so. up in every time. Every time. I'm not lying. And right. it's part of our, our detailed work Cause you, when it comes to... You were there, you had paid the money for something, and then you were there in, trying to experience that, what you had paid for, and it wasn't d- being delivered back to you by us. You know what I mean? So we were letting you down. And thank God, to your credit, you didn't just walk off and be pissed off. For well, the she did send Delisa to come no, find me. No, but you let me know. I let do us remember know that you, now. No. <laughs> Rather than just letting it fester or something that we would never, what exactly? You know what I mean? we, we didn't wash our hands. We no. tried to figure out. So no. we wanted to rush right in and handle it. And thanks for letting and us know. And on this podcast, we want to say sorry again. <laughs> well, I accept your apology. <laughs> but no, I mean, you guys addressed it the way that I wanted it to. I mean, people can't read your minds if mm-hmm. I'm not letting you know that there's a problem. Thank you and for being direct. Of That's course, giving you the opportunity mm-hmm. to fix it. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna. I don't want to set myself up for failure. Failure, especially in relationships in my profession right. so if i Thank can you. just let you know what my expectations are oh, yeah. and what i would like and how they weren't being met <laughs> right to be fair that's what we heard and so it was great it was it was a very it was kind of painful in the moment and kind of embarrassing on our end but i was so gr- i'm grateful that you would let us know so that's like a little little microcosm of how how to do a career right, right. rather than taking the little slights and making them long-term little <clears throat> little rifts or burn bridges potentially you know deal with things in the moment and then fix them to the best of human ability and then you can go on and you can laugh about it later of course you just got to communicate you have yeah. to tell people what you want mm-hmm. and a lot of times they'll give you what you want if you just make it clear what yeah. you want and why i think if you have a good reason especially in comp like with negotiating or even in mm-hmm. life outside mm-hmm. of comp with your partner or anything if you let them know what you want and why and you're being reasonable i think most times you get it and if they trust that you're coming not from a selfish place, but from a like a reasonable, a reasonable build bridge building kind of place, mm-hmm. then you can meet them in the middle. Yes. So you're very, are you very attention to the details kind of person? I would say yes, except if you ask my husband mm-hmm. about like sweeping the floors and things, he would say no. <laughs> you missed a spot. That's what yeah. you'd say. Oh, All right. Yeah. <laughs> and a being a sh- being a, a mom of twins, that's I can't. I have two kids. Think God they're two years apart. Yeah, you got to break That's in there. That's super difficult. I can't imagine having two at once. It's yeah, been, why'd you do that? Well, it's been so cool. I told my mom, I think having one would just be boring, right? I mean... Oh, man. <laughs> boring is good. Yeah. The sleep no. is good. <laughs> yeah. No, sleep is good, but it's cool. I mean, it's crazy how different their personalities mm-hmm. are, how different their looks are. They're just two totally different tiny human beings who happen mm-hmm. to be born at the same time. But um, I think having a toddler and an infant might be harder because at least with the twins, they eat at the same time. They eat the same amount. They oh, sleep true. at the yeah, same yeah, yeah. time. And you're Two not, for one. Yeah, you're not making snacks for the toddler and getting formula ready for the baby. You're just doing the same thing twice. And what are their names? The boy is Jaime Tomas. And, Jaime. Yeah, and the girl is Zoe May. Whoa. Whoa. Those are really yeah. cool names. That's so cool. They're going to they're gonna be famous. Jaime and Zoe. Yeah. Right? Yep. Like Jay Z. Like Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> what does your husband do? He works for LA County Sheriff's Department. He's on the SWAT team. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. So be careful. I'll, you better edit that part that she said to edit out. I will. And, and <laughs> give her that accent. <laughs> I know. Give me the accent I want. I'll bet you he's a good negotiator too. He is. Right? Yeah. He he is. I mean, he's good at what he does. He loves it. I think that's why he's so good at it. Mm-hmm. He really enjoys it. He's been on the department for I think like 17, 18 years. Whoa. Yeah, he was at Pasadena City College, and for one of his classes, he had to take a ride-along. Yeah. And he never knew he wanted to be a police officer before that ride-along, and mm-hmm, then mm-hmm. instantly, he was hooked. Really? And even now, it's it's the adrenaline. He'll uh-huh. he'll have the radio on, the police scanner, yeah. and he'll hear like a yeah. pursuit or his, something his happening. Perk up. Yes, and he turns it up, and I know that I'm that means turn Kayla down, <laughs> but it's interesting. I like hearing it too. So yeah, how'd you guys meet? 
Online. Shut up. Yeah. Match.com. This is such a funny story because we met on Plenty of Fish, which is free. The free one. Yes, the free one. <laughs> And why the, I, why the free one, right? Just like well, because I don't want a paid online date, right? You know, but I, th- I figured, well, if you're paying the quality spare, that's my theory, <laughs> but maybe not. That's what I thought. Right? I have done the paid ones before, and it's the same exact guys, literally the I same know. guys. They're just casting a very wide net, so I figure I'll do the free uh, one. There goes our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, eHarmony. <laughs> But yeah, we so met online. Funny. I was very excited about him. We talked for maybe a month before we met, and I showed Deliza pictures of him, and she goes, "I know him." That's a lot. No. What? Yeah. I How did? Well, you got arrested by him one time. <laughs> <laughs> her husband and my husband actually. Well, she. Her husband works on the department as well, so he works at the <sighs> station crazy. that my husband Super used crazy. to work at before going to SWAT. Are they friends? Those two. Yeah, I mean they're. I mean they're mostly friends because we make them hang out together when we're together. <laughs> but they because they don't work together anymore. No, but they have a lot in common though with you know police work. They do. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So that was all on match. Yours? Would you meet yours on match too? We'll find out later where your podcast. Yeah, is. we'll get there. We'll get there, people. <laughs> but I want to hear your story. You said that. So you met him on match. Uh, uh, no, plenty, uh, plenty of fish. And then, and then what happened? Why'd you wait so a month? Though? That's a long time because people can make up stories. Yeah, I mean, our schedules just weren't lining oh. up. Uh, he he has three kids from a prior marriage, and so when he had the kids, obviously that was not time that we could go out and meet, mm-hmm. which I respected. I think that's nice that he made the kids a priority. So uh, I like that from the start. And I was actually going to Coachella the following weekend, so that right. was out. <laughs> and uh, it was just kind of okay. a back and forth thing. And then uh, maybe three weeks or a month into it, we finally met up. We went to Beachwood Barbecue and Brewery <laughs> in Long Beach. Yeah, met there, and ever we just kept talking ever since. And was he exactly how he described himself? Yes. Thank his, God. His pictures were accurate. The way he was around me was accurate. Uh-huh. And Deliza had told me, yeah, he's a good guy. So oh, good. that made me feel comfortable. But yeah, it's been great. He's my best friend. And it's nice to go home at the end of the day to someone that you That's love awesome. so much. That's really yeah. cool. I met my, my wife on Match.com. We met on a Thursday night. I winked at her or whatever it was. Right? Are you Wink. being serious? Yes. Oh, 2005. Okay. On October 4th, 2005, I logged in, saw our picture, and we agreed to meet the very next day. So I, because I had gotten burned where I'd like didn't meet up with the person <clears throat> right away. And then all of a sudden you build this sort of like fantasy person about who, because you're just chatting, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or even on the phone, the voice sounds a certain way and you got a picture to look at. But then when you meet them, it, you have to kill that person because they <laughs> didn't really exist. That's so true. I never and thought about that. And you got to get that. to know the real person and mm-hmm. it's sometimes not, you know. Doesn't, but anyway, so I, we met the very next day for lunch, and then we spent all together, and then the rest is history, as you would say. That's awesome. You guys, I like never, it. You guys never met a catfish? No. Yeah, you know what the show is, catfish? Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah. And I know what the concept my is. My mom no. actually got catfished. She got catfished. What? Yeah, so she, my my mom, and my dad separated two years ago, mm-hmm. and so she's been on the online. You know, dating. Yeah. And right away, she was so connected to this guy. And she's like, all in love. And I'm like, Mom, have you met him? No. He's working at an oil refinery thing in the middle of the water, the ocean. But sometimes when he calls me, he can't FaceTime me because the reception is really bad. And I'm like, Mom, please watch the show. And she's (laughs) she's like, no, I don't want to watch that. And I'm like, no, watch it, Mom. So eventually after uh, like two months of talking to this guy, and then she started wondering, okay, maybe my, my sons are right. He doesn't want to FaceTime me. Yeah. That's so weird, right? And But she's all in love with this guy because yeah. he says the right things oh, perfect. through text messages uh-huh. or whatever. So she copied his intro, like the, the way she first started, he started writing her, uh-huh. copied and pasted on Google. Sure enough, so- all these women. <gasps> posted his first and like the intro of whoa of it the same guy and another thing that's just stood out is that he started talking about he was having a hard time with money oh yeah mm-hmm. and can i just borrow and my mom bucks? was dealing with divorcing my dad and she's like i can't right now i can't right now but i will help you eventually <gasps> oh you know my God. poor woman long story short she cut him off blocked him i don't know how she blocked him but yeah 
close call so that 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 would scare me with the online dating situation luckily you guys got lucky yeah have you listened to the dirty john podcast no mm, no oh you're gonna need to why it is a podcast about a woman who was basically catfished i mean the man was you know real in real life but mm-hmm. he took all her money oh. he was addicted he was an oh, anesthesiologist God. nurse and he claimed he was actually a doctor in anesthesiology but he had a a drug addiction, you know, mm. whatever the drugs they administer, and he kind of got hooked on those. But it takes place all through Orange County. So she lived oh, wow. in like, her business was in Irvine, she lived in Newport, and it takes you on a wild ride. I cannot give away the ending, but oh trust my God, me, I can't wait. it's so it's a good. true story? I, yes, and I listened, Dirty to, the, John. I listened Dirty to the John. all, I think six or however many episodes in one day, I could not <laughs> put it down. <laughs> That's how the first season of Serial was for me. Did you ever mm-hmm. listen yes. to Serial? The second ver- the second season, I didn't get into as much, but when it was the uh, Adnan guy. Sayed, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That was good. That was addicting too. Dirty John, I'm going to check it out. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like when I watched Narcos. Really? I was like, I already know what's going to happen, but man, this is good. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys listen to any other podcasts? Oh, I listen to the Joe Rogan one now. Um, and a few music ones too, because I'm into music. So I'll listen to these producers or musicians and stuff like that. So, what yeah. else do you listen to? Uh, there's one called Crime Junkies. Oh, really? Yeah, that we listen to. Uh, my husband and I and yeah. the kids when we're all in the car together. It goes over crimes, either you know serial killers mm-hmm. or missing persons. That that one's very good. Uh, that and of course the TOA storytellers. Oh, of I like that. Oh my gosh! Hey, nice please plug. Uh, record that piece. <laughs> you, you guys were saying you have what, it's like seven hundred plus listens? Yeah, so far. That's awesome. A little bit over seven hundred in just a couple weeks. It's like whoa! I'm shocked weeks, from yeah. a dead stop to something. I don't know what's happening, but we'll just keep doing it. It's fun. Mostly, mostly it's just fun, and it's like man, we get to see these, hear, hear these amazing stories. And it's really, honestly, it's becoming like therapy for us. That's what I've felt, I figure it out, you it's know, true. like, man, after every single podcast, I feel like I've learned something. That's cool. You know? Yeah. It's pretty cool. There was a rumor back in the day that they were going to make a work comp reality TV show. Oh, really? Which I would totally watch, but it Can never Can you imagine happened. cameras going all through here all, all day long interrupting? That'd be kind of cool, actually, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or even the courthouse. You know, I think uh-huh. people... Oh, when, yeah. they, when they go to the comp courts for the first time, they're sort of taken aback. Hey, why don't you start your own podcast? Why not? Just set it up right in here. With you and Deliza. Yeah. What do you want to do? You guys could totally get it. You'd have lots of guests what coming would, in. Yeah. Would it be a comp podcast? I don't know. Or it would just be a whatever podcast? Like, I don't know. Personal interest. Yeah. Why don't we interview all of your guests after you interview them, and we'll be like, "How did you really feel about yeah. the TOA guys?" Uh, and know. we'll give them an opportunity to maybe clean up the, the story. Y- yeah, yeah, if there's something that they <laughs> wish they would have said, <laughs> wish they wouldn't have said, it's kind of like their second chance. But it is true. I, I Even like that. that part is I true. Like I remember he did a podcast with me, and then you start thinking afterwards. I haven't released it yet, but yeah, what I recorded it? Why didn't we talk about this? Why don't we talk about that? But the beauty about this is that, you know, we're getting to know you personally where there's no script, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. and it, it's kind of cool being able to, we can do part two later, Kayla, part two. Yeah. An update. Yes. Yeah. Podcast. Yeah. See if there's any more twins. Oh, I know. <laughs> knock on wood. There won't be. <laughs> yeah, knock on wood. I mean, you're asking me right now. I think it's funny oh, when people ask new mothers, do you want any more kids? And mm-hmm. it's like, right now Please. no but um, mm-hmm. ask me again in two years i don't know it's the like, cool part you got a boy and a girl yeah like, i know you got lucky so there yeah perfectly symmetrical i got a boy and a girl too my girl is 21 though oh yours are 21 months i got well. 21 year old <laughs> <laughs> is yours in the court reporting field at all or no if she were inclined if she had any interest sparked at all for it i would have encouraged it but because she doesn't or didn't it's such a difficult sort of mountain to climb unless you're really passionate about it there's no way you're gonna finish because the, getting through this it it's so not hard. easy to get become a court reporter people think mm-hmm. it might be but there's you have to, mm-hmm. you have to type 200 words per minute mm-hmm. um 98 accuracy mm-hmm. and four speakers at the same time wow that's crazy i did hear there's a shortage of court reporters yeah have you been feeling that at all like is are your any depots that get canceled yeah. because there's no 
Cory Porter? Not yet. No, we. Well, I haven't experienced it personally. I've just heard kind of through the grapevine. Maybe Court Reporter's mentioning there it. Is, there, there, yeah. There's a shortage. There is. There's. Yeah, it's it's nationwide actually too. But you know, it, it affects us here in, in our own backyard because our state test is so difficult that in the March 2019 test, we sent 111 candidates to go take the test, try and pass. Only six passed. <gasps> That's harder than the bar. The rest of them all went home em- empty-handed and come back next time. And sometimes they don't come back. I've, I've met a lot of people that went to school for, to be a court reporter, and they're like, screw this. Yeah. So now you know what they're going to do? The, the CRB, this court reporters, reporters board, um, has, is going to allow the voice maskers to – I put my hand in, my, in front of my mouth because they'll be having a little mask. They'll be speaking into a mask. Repeating what you're saying. And How they'll do you be, feel about and that? And they'll be speaking into some software on their laptop. And, re- no. and repeating back what you're saying. So they would have said, no. But then why don't they just have me put just the mask me? on and then w- cut the middleman? I'm not to, you know, say that. No, I know. But it's it's a weird thing. We, yeah, it's strange. But it's just to try and address the shortage and allow them to start taking the test. Those vo- voice maskers could take the test in the past. And you could see them at your next depot. It would be legal. That's how I feel about them changing the bar from three days to two days. Really? Yeah. You know, if you can't if you can't pass it, we shouldn't dumb down the it test. Screwed, That's huh? true, right? Dumb down that test. No, but it's true. So yeah. they're really doing that, or they're thinking about doing it. Oh, it that? was already done. It's yeah. only two days now. It's already been brought in. All yeah. these people are wimps, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I you, can't say anything, but I mean, I think it's a, a good accomplishment to pass the bar or the court reporters mm-hmm. testing. I've, I've heard it's insanely hard. And yeah. You're saying that's true. I think it's true. It was, it was really true for me. But you passed the bar here in California the first time. Yes. Look at you, Smarty. That's rare. Yeah, because yeah. California is Very a lot more difficult than other states. I remember on the third and last day, in between the morning and afternoon sessions of the test, getting in my car and thinking. I wonder how long it would take me to drive to Mexico. And if I just did and I never came back, like, would that be okay? And then I kind of got myself together again, <laughs> walked back in and finished the test. And your Honda Civic. Yeah. That's a good little story. Right yeah. there. What did you learn about yourself in that moment? Well, that I can pull through. I mean, everyone has little moments where they think like, this is too hard. I can't do that. But that's not really what's important because everyone feels that way from time to time. What's important is that you just get back up and you complete the job. What's important, would you say, is to not go with the emotion in that moment? Because that's just temporary, temporal. You know what I mean? That, that'll be fleeting hopefully soon. But stick with the plan because the plan is good. Yeah, like you have a little bit of a caveman brain, everyone does, and mm. then there's like a higher thinking brain, and sometimes when you're feeling distress mm. or um, just discomfort, that caveman brain that's just based on survival and doing what want. What Fight you, or flight. Yeah, and what feels good, that kind of wants to take over, but you have to say like, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's so. interesting to hear you say about that, that little caveman moment though for you. Yeah. Most people probably wouldn't think that you have very many of those. Well, I would like to think I don't have very many of them either, but I mean, we're all human and right. everyone sometimes feels like this this is more than I can handle, which mm-hmm. usually is not true, but it's yeah. what we tell ourselves about that moment. Yeah, yeah. Who is your confidant to be able to g- gain strength from in those sort of you know down moments? Professionally, Deliza. Very professional. Yes. And personally, too. I mean, yeah. if I could mash up her and my husband together like my two biggest cheerleaders yeah yeah it'd be this hybrid perfect supportive person right yeah that's true we do we you'd do be a lot that. taller to lisa <laughs> <laughs> carrying a gun too right <laughs> you gotta mesh it all together what were we saying no but it's true though we do need somebody to lean on sometimes even though yeah, i'm sure you're, you're a really strong person you know, people don't mm. think about it, but they have somebody always supporting them somehow and holding them up, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even if I could do it alone, I wouldn't want to. I mean, I think that just makes for a lonely life. Yeah. So it's just so much more fun having people that you love and care for around you and they feel the same way about you. And You know, you're building a legacy right now for your kids. And I'm sure that at this age, you're not even thinking about it, but... What is something that you want to pass down to them eventually? That you can really accomplish anything through hard work. Don't listen to anyone if they tell you you can't do something. Um, You know, 
almost nothing is impossible if you work hard enough at it. Did you have anybody that ever doubted you? Of course. Like what? Uh, well, my parents, I would say they doubted me when I started my own firm. They, well, they, were, ner- well, they were nervous for me. They said, why do you want to leave the job that you have? You're mm. a partner there. It's a good job. You know, are you sure? You're so young. Actually, I didn't know you were a partner there. Yeah. Whoa. So you were, it's, it was a big jump. It was a big leap of faith to do this. Yeah, it was. But I'm glad I did. It it all it all worked out. But yeah, I mean, sometimes I think people that doubt you they have still have good intentions. Mm. It's, pr- um, it's protective. It's not selfish. Yeah. Likely, right? Yeah. Was there anybody that said you can do it? Total haters. Total. Yeah, but we just blocked them out. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm I didn't actually let too many people know that mm-hmm. that's what I was doing. So yeah. I kind of just put the blinders on and only let people that I knew would be supportive or mm-hmm. had, you know, my best intentions in mind, I let them in on what was happening. How do you, how, what would you say to somebody who's feeling like they are, you know, maybe not happy where they're at, they feel like they need to turn that page. You had the courage and the grit to actually do that. Whereas a lot of people think about it and think about it and think about it and never do it. Like, how do you become you Mm -hmm. well i'd say make a plan you know before i started i put down on paper what's the worst case scenario you actually did this yes what's the best case scenario and what's the likely scenario and when you can see on paper your worst fears like Mm -hmm. what's the worst that yeah what did what did that say what did that line item no clients come with me worst case scenario nobody shows up yeah nobody (laughs) wants to work with me wants to work with us Mm -hmm. and we have to go get new jobs And that's the worst case scenario. And obviously neither one of us wanted that to happen, but I knew it wouldn't kill me. I wouldn't die if that happened. And Mm -hmm. and I was, and I also told myself the worst case scenario was not the likeliest scenario. Right. It's unlikely to happen, but I need to be aware that it could happen. And same thing with the best case scenario. And then there's, you know, the likely scenario. And that's usually best case is everybody flocks over and right. It's like gold from the, from day one. Yeah. But somewhere in the middle is what the reality shaped up to be. Exactly. Right? Yeah. But I mean, also the challenging part, I'm sure, of owning a business is that you got to also think about the, the livelihood of all your employees. Yeah. And the stress in the sense that you have to have accounts, you have to have files. Um, payroll marches on whether payroll, you've got the money or not. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's scary to think about those things, and I think the bigger you get, the more there is on the line. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time, we knew what we were doing worked. We just had to do it at a new firm, and that was our firm that that we had created. So we already had the formula to success. Mm-hmm. We just needed to step out and do it on our own. And I think we both had faith that we know what works, we're gonna do what works, and people are gonna like it, and they mm-hmm. have. Mm. And we're happy that we've been able to not only provide the level of services that we do to our clients that we're really confident in and proud about, but on top of that, we employ a number of people who Mm -hmm. I think have great jobs. And I'm not just saying that because they work for me. I I think they do have great jobs. They probably tell you that. Well, we try to balance you know, mm-hmm. life outside of work with work so people are happy when they come in. Yeah. We give everyone in a bonus vacation day on the month of their birthday they can use any time to. Yeah. Nice. To go anywhere. Right? What's that? It went, it, I can't hear it anymore in my oh, ears. Oh, okay, I turned it down a little bit so I thought you were correct. Okay. Oh, sorry, am I, should I? <laughs> no, 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 I didn't oh, know okay. if you, you kept on doing this. No, because they're like falling back oh, on my okay. head a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> we have cheap gear, let's just say it all out. <laughs> but, but, um, <laughs> Can you hear yourself okay? Do now? you feel like you have to reinvent yourself sometimes with your, with starting to, having a business? To I know this. I know every company has to figure out somehow to stand out and change, like you know, because of the industry changes all the time. But you know, only in your own business, you have to feel. Do you ever like feel like you have to re- reinvent yourself, or do you have something that just that's going that's you know that works? Yeah, I think we have something that works. I don't think we need to reinvent ourselves, but sometimes you just have to be able to explain, articulate to people what it is that you do, answer mm-hmm. questions that mm-hmm. you wouldn't normally have to answer if you weren't uh, the owner of a business. I mean, we have 
core values that we believe in. We have all this information on our website. And yeah. so it's just, I don't think any of that changes. I think working hard, doing good work, being accountable, having integrity, those things never need to be reinvented. Right. That's a really good point. Yeah, that was pretty good what you just said. Thank you. <laughs> I really did. I like that. Yeah, excellence never goes out of style, right? And you guys are rooted in excellence. It says right here. That we are. It's in black and white. I know. <clears throat> hey, is there an expectation or a hope that your um, associate attorneys will bring in their own files or they just need to focus on files, the actual work of it? I think when you do good work mm -hmm. and you show people that you consistently get good outcomes, the work does come. Mm -hmm. uh, if our attorneys want to go out and do marketing, I am more than supportive of that. I think that's great to go above and beyond and do extra for the team. Yeah. But we don't want to be like this flashy firm that makes promises they can't keep. I think that what's helped me to be successful is just doing good work and people notice that and they'll bring in more files because of that. Mm. And then just, you know, being a personable human that's pleasant to talk to. And yep. it's, it, you know, it's like I emailed an adjuster the other day and back and forth and there were smiley faces. And I'm like, it's nice to work with nice people. Yes. People who are just being real. Yeah. Right? Normal. Yes. Makes it more pleasurable, I think. Yeah. I got to I gotta learn that. Each client, I'm <laughs> sure, is a lot different too, right? <laughs> so you have to customize the way you work with them, the way you respond to emails, the way you you know, do everything with them. Do you feel like that's a challenge? I think as long as people let their expectations be known and are open about their company culture, mm -hmm. then you can assimilate to that and you can meet their expectations and even go above and beyond those. So you just need to know right from the get-go who you're working with, what they expect from you. Mm -hmm. And as long as you have that and a mutual level of respect, I think it's all good. That's good. She's very positive, right? I think right? it is all good. Well, she should be. I mean, yeah, in three years, you've created this whole thing it's from, amazing. from scratch. Yeah. And, um, and it's obviously working, and it's got a great life work balance and specifically designed by you guys to um, work for you. Mm -hmm. And you guys are having fun and <clears throat> providing a great service to, to the industry and helping people. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to think so. I, I can see it, right? Yeah, and with the smile too. She has, it's just very, you're very confident. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, I can tell. Yes. It shows. Thanks. Did we forget anything? Did we leave off anything that you wanted to bring up or <clears throat> mention? I'm sure the answer is yes, but I won't think about it until two days later. Okay. So we'll just record it on your iPhone and mail it in. We'll, we'll save it for the, the updated episode. Exactly. Yeah. That's a deal. There you go. That's a deal. And she's opening her, opening her third or fourth location. It's coming. Yeah. You, 2020. You, you have two offices, but you guys cover all of California or what is it that you guys cover at this moment? Yes, we cover, cover all Southern California, no questions asked. We do Northern California upon request. I mean, uh -huh. that's a great thing with technology now. Even if you have a file in Northern California, right. you maybe have to make one or two appearances because you take the depot and then you go to court or mm -hmm. whatever it may be, but it's not cost prohibitive to travel, which great is point. nice. Yeah. yeah. And you guys are, you, you mentioned being paperless. Like, how is that possible for a law firm to go paperless um, as, as much as possible? So paperless in the sense that we don't generate any paper for ourselves. We only generate paper when we have to mail out something, serve it mm -hmm. on other people. A lot, a lot of our clients, though, are paperless as well. So they want things just either faxed or, you know, electronic fax mm -hmm. or emailed to them. Mm -hmm. They don't even have paper on their end. So that's nice. And when I have a court appearance, I have every single one of my files with me. I have the entire file for every file that the firm has. So isn't that amazing? That is it's awesome. all right on the laptop, right? Yes. Isn't that crazy? You can have your whole life in 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 one little like box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to carry and, with you. And I don't have to lug around a yeah. big cart. Uh, it's a great time to be alive in a lot it of is. ways. It is. So what a time, <laughs> what a time. <laughs> to be alive. <laughs> well, you have been a great guest. I run it. I'm going to say I appreciate what you've done and have done and for carving out the time today for us. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. This was exciting. It wasn't as scary as I thought it would See? be. Yeah. yeah. So, Not bad. Thank you so much. It was good. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the TOA Storytellers podcast. Of course. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.